नमस्कार मैं समीर कुमार सहायक प्राचार्य भौतिकी विभाग एच आर कॉलेज अमनौर आप सबों का इस वीडियो लेक्चर में स्वागत करता हूं टुडे वी विल स्टडी ए न्यू टॉपिक इन द फील्ड ऑफ ऑप्टिक्स एंड लाइट कॉल्ड फॉर्मेट प्रिंसिपल यूजिंग दिस प्रिंसिपल वी विल डिराइव आल्सो डिफरेंट लॉज लाइक लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन एंड लॉ ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन Before I start, let me tell you that you need to revise the following topics in order to understand this principle effectively. So, based on approximation, optics has been broadly classified into three categories, namely geometrical optics or ray optics, wave optics or physical optics, and quantum optics. geometrical optics or ray optics this is the study of light as rays especially useful for studying the optical behavior of the system which has length scale much larger than the wavelength of light what does this mean so when we shine light on lens or mirror there the size of lens or mirror is very large as compared to the wavelength of the light so studying the behavior of mirror or lens we use geometrical optics concept under this geometrical optics we study phenomena like basic ray tracing image formation and optical instruments design wave optics is the study of light as waves under this category we study the phenomena like diffraction polarization interference and interferometers quantum optics is the study of light as particles laser and measure are application of quantum optics so basically what is the difference between geometrical optics and wave optics let us consider this figure basically geometrical optics is an approximation to the wave theory when wavelength is very very small as compared to other length scales in the problem so in this figure the light rays crosses the hole of dimension t this dimension very very large as compared to the wavelength and forms an image on the screen this image of the same shape and size as of this hole now when we consider this figure bottom one and uh, consider the wave properties of light and consider that the dimension of this hole is very very small as compared to the wavelength what we study what we find is that diffraction or interference phenomena on the screen in order to show the wave properties we have shown the light with a broken lines we can also observe here that this light illuminates the screen far from the central portion of the hole this behavior is due to the diffraction which comes under wave optics what is the fermat principles or principle of least time it states that the light propagates between two points in such a way that the propagation time is least in other words we can say that light propagating or traveling between two points would take the shortest path what does this mean it means that of all the possible paths that light might take to get from one point to the another point it takes the path which requires the shortest or least time now we know that in a homogeneous medium light rays are rectilinear that is between any medium if the refractive index is constant light travels in a straight line 
if a light signal is sent from one point to another point this point to another point and if there is no media we know that light will travel in a straight line but what happens if the there is an obstacle or there is a variation in the refractive index in a medium so use as stated by permit it states that it will follow a path which will take the least time among all the possible paths it is important to mention here that this permit principle is valid for all traveling wave and not only for light so let's understand the application of permit principle using this principle we can derive so many laws like law of reflection and law of refraction so in order to derive the law of reflection that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection let us consider this figure in this if we want the light to reach from a to b and if there is no obstacle the shortest path will be or the least time path will be a straight line now if we sign light on this mirror or dielectric interface and want to determine which path in which path light will take the least time then as permit said it will be a path which takes the least time so light can come from here to here and go there it can come from here to here go there or there are so many possibilities so let's assume p is the point of reflection theta 1 is the incident angle the angle between the incident ray and the normal theta 2 is the angle of reflection l is the horizontal distance between the point a and b horizontal distance h1 h2 are the vertical distance of point a and b from the mirror interface x is the horizontal distance between point a and b and l minus x is the horizontal distance between point p and p now what will be the path length of ap this is simply square root of x square plus h1 square according to pythagoras theorem and pb path length of pb will be l minus x ka whole square plus h2 square square root under now time required for the light to travel between the two points from a to b after hitting this point we have to divide each path length by the speed of light let's assume this is the air medium so we divide this this path length by the speed of light and this path length by the speed of light and add both and we get the total time required for the light to travel between the two points now in order to minimize the time we set the derivative of the time with respect to x equal to 0 that is dt upon dx equal to 0 now on differentiating this expression with respect to x we get this now taking this term on the right hand side we get x upon square root of x square plus h1 square equal to l minus x upon square root l minus x ka whole square plus h2 ka whole square what is this value this value is if we consider this angle if we consider this triangle this angle is 90 minus theta 1 now cos theta equal to cos 90 minus theta 1 equal to x upon this one b upon height uh, b upon hypotenuse so x upon square root of x square plus h1 square equal to similarly we can find that sin theta 2 will be this value so sin theta 1 equal to sin theta 2 which implies that theta 1 equal to theta 2 so angle of incidence equal to angle of refraction when this condition will be set satisfied we will have the light will take the least time from 
this point to reach point B. Now using Fermat principle, we can also derive the Snell's law. Now let us consider we have signed light from point A. P is the point at which light meets a glass medium or any other medium and reaches point B. Theta 1 is the angle of reflection angle of incidence and theta 2 is the angle of refraction now l is the distance with horizontal distance between a and b h1 and h2 are the vertical distances of point a from this interface and point b from this interface now again path length ap will be square root of x square plus h1 square and path length pv will be square root of l minus x ka whole square plus h2 ka whole square uh, let's assume the refractive index of this medium is n1 and the refractive index of this medium is n2 so what will be the velocity of light in this medium this will be the equal to speed of light upon n1 and the velocity of light in this medium will be speed of light upon n2 now what will be the total time total time will be this time plus this time so this time is the path length divided by the speed of light in this medium and this time is the path length pv divided by the speed of light in this medium so we get total time equal to this expression now again to minimize the time we set the diff dt upon dx equal to zero and b on differentiation we get this which is equal to n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 so we saw that how format principle is useful to derive so many physical laws now i have given you two problems based on today's study one is light travels from air into an optical fiber with an index of refraction 1.44 question a is in which direction does light bend so you can say it will bend towards the normal or away from normal if the angle of incident on the bend of the fiber is 22 degree what is the angle of refraction inside the fiber so you can determine you know n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 now using Fermat's principle establish the condition of total internal reflection we have derived law of reflection and law of refraction so using same principle you have to determine the total internal reflection so in order to establish this you must understood understand the concept of total internal reflection that is light should travel from denser to redder medium